Hi. I'm Blaine Sundred with AWS Training and Certification and AWS Deep Racer. And today we're going to open up our first Deep Racer. Deep Racer is a machine learning driven autonomous racing car. It's a 118th scale vehicle that you get to load your own machine model into that you program yourself and it drives races all based on the model you load. Let's take a look at what's inside. All right, very first thing we notice when we open up the box, this is our get started guide. So it has uh, on the back the start your engines URL, which will take us to the understanding, terms and conditions, all those pieces. We will look at that in just a bit. Also, comes with a roll of tape, which you can use to actually lay out your first test track inside your office or your home. We'll come to that. Let's get to the car itself. Packed very nicely in its own foam layers. And there is the vehicle. Now, right away, one of the things we notice is it's got a plastic wrap on it that's designed to protect the shell. So let's go ahead and remove that before we go any farther. We've taken the pins off so we can remove the plastic cover. We will look deeper inside uh, and see what we've got. So the plastic shell is designed to protect all of the key moving parts. One of the uh, key things you'll notice right away inside the AWS Deep Racer is the camera. The main input when it comes to uh, the car steering itself is based on visual inputs. This is a four megapixel camera, although the nice thing is we actually don't need all four megapixels. When it races, it down samples and makes it black and white, which actually turns out to be better uh, to drive the car. It's got the built-in monster shocks, so it's designed for high durability, as well as all the compute components inside, which we'll take a look at in just a bit. Let's finish taking things out of the box, though, first. One thing you'll want to know about your Deep Racer box is it has a false bottom. So we go ahead and remove the bottom styrofoam and cardboard, and we get into the battery and uh, power elements. AWS Deep Racer right now ships with one of two different batteries. So depending on which box you get, you will either have the white Energear battery or the gray Dell battery. Now they both provide power for the compute module. Uh, they're both highly durable. They both provide all the power we need. Um, they're slightly different in the way that you charge the batteries. When you first get your kit, the batteries are not fully charged. They have just a shadow charge on them. It's enough to get started, but you might want to consider actually first plugging in the batteries, letting it charge for a couple hours. You don't have to. It's a choice. If you have the Dell battery to charge that, you're given a charger base, which has a little notch right there, which matches up with the inset piece here on the battery. Power cord, three little triangular dots, matches up very nicely with the Dell battery dock. Connect that. And then I've got a power supply over here that we are just gonna plug that in and get that charging. You will see the charge meter there. Now, I've already taken time to charge this for a little bit. As yours charges, you'll see how full it is. If you are given the inner gear, it's actually slightly simpler. The power cable is a USB-C charger. So, it simply goes right into the USB-C adapter. And then, plug it in, let this one charge. And just like the Dell, there are light indicators, which will tell you how far along in the charge it is. There is one more battery that will exist in all the kits, and that's the car battery, the drive battery. We have two separate batteries, one for compute, which is either the Dell or the Energear, and then the second battery, which is smaller, 
actually drives the vehicle around the track. So two connectors here on this particular one. We've got the white connector, which we charge with, and the red connector, which we run the car with. Nice thing is the ports we connect them to are very clearly color-coded as well. So in this case, this is the docking station to charge the battery. And as we can see, it's got the white port. And we simply connect white to white. Then adapter cable plugs in right there. Finally, two charging lights, red and green. When this plugs in, If both lights are turned on, that means the battery is charging right now. If it's just the green, that means you have a full charge and you're ready to go. Again, before you drive a lot, you want to make sure you get this to a full charge. It will have enough for initial starting testing. Give it a full charge when you're ready to race. All right, let's set that off the side. Get those batteries charging. Now, there's a few other cables that we see here in the box. Um, depending on the battery pack you get, you will have a connector that goes from the battery pack to the car itself or the compute. Uh, this is the one you'll get for the Dell computer, for the Dell battery. Uh, this is the one that you'll get for the Energear battery. They both work fine, just depends on the battery. Let's set those to the side. Also inside the box, you might have a silicon wrap, which is used to control any excess cable you might need once you plug the compute battery into the car itself. All right, final pieces that are here inside the box. Uh, we've got a, a USB uh, connector, which we will use to connect the deep racer to the laptop. And finally, just some extra hardware. Uh, we've got some extra pins that we use to connect the shell of the car to the vehicle, uh, the compute layer to the drivetrain. So if you lose a pin, you got extra pins. We've got a couple extra of the stanchions. So these are the ones that hold the shell above the car. So if uh, you smash into a wall with vigor, you can always replace them if you need. All right, that empties our box. I want to take a little closer look at what's under the hood here on the compute on the car itself. Um, but we've unpacked everything here. Let's take a closer look at the vehicle itself. Now, one of the first things you might see when you look close at the vehicle is it will look like your front tires are not aligned properly, that one of your wheels is sticking out to the side. This is intentional. It's part of the design, and it's called Ackerman's Steering, which at velocity, as you're making corners, you actually do not want the wheels to be perfectly aligned. You want them slightly off parallel to each other. It gives them better grip, better traction, better speed around the corners. There's a lot of math involved, and you're welcome to look up Ackerman steering if you have questions about that, but it's baked in the car. So if you see they're not aligned, that's a good thing. All right, as we look at the top of the car, we already talked about the camera. Um, one of the things you'll notice is you will see there are multiple ports to the right and the left of the camera. AWS Deep Racer was built with extensibility in mind. It's built to have just a single front lens camera today, but it's got the ports that if you wanted, you could eventually upgrade and have two different cameras, allowing for stereoscopic vision. In fact, there's a lot of additional ports that are not in use, designed for future uh, features, future changes, future modifications. This is the bed that the compute battery will get Velcroed into. So once we actually finish charging our battery and hook it up, uh, we'll tie that in. This whole top of the bed is in fact where the compute happens. Deep Racer, the vehicle, is divided into two layers, the compute side and the drivetrain. And they're held together by more pins, so let's go ahead and pull these pins out. And the top layer just lifts off. Now, be careful lifting the top layer off because they are wired together, and you don't want to separate those wires. Let me try it from this side. It might be a little bit easier to see. But on the bottom here, we can see the fins. That's the heat sink. And when this machine is running, it is running at serious processor power. 
Uh, if you just got off a lap around the track, do not touch this. We don't want any burned fingers. Uh, there's a lot of heat it puts out. So as we look at the side of the compute half, it's got a number of ports just like a desktop because this is a mobile Linux desktop. It's got an HDMI port. You can plug a monitor directly in and run it. Uh, this is our power adapter port and then a USB port that we will use to connect our computer with to actually help finish configuring the deep racer. On the other side, these are our power buttons. So power on off, any uh, reset we need, indicators telling you whether you got the right battery, your Wi-Fi connections, a micro SD card in case you need to load uh, an object, a file onto the uh, compute module. Micro SD is available there. On the back side, this is the tail light. And the nice thing with the tail light is as part of your setup, you can program whatever color you want in it. We really want this to be a customized, unique experience for every driver. So your own tail lights become part of the way it becomes your machine. All right, that's the compute side. On the drivetrain, this is the drive motor. Again, it's got a heat sink. If you've been driving for a while, please don't touch it. It's going to put out a lot of BTUs. Right here is the port where the car battery is going to get plugged in. Uh, in fact, we can already see there's the red plug where we're going to plug that battery in once it's time. And then beyond that, the suspension, the wheels, the drive all happens automatically. Obviously, it's fun to look at. You can see right in, inside the machine, uh, the steering, the suspension, but nothing else we have to do to set this up. Once our batteries are charged, we will move on to the assembly phase. So give us a couple minutes and we'll be right back.